If we tell the dead to rise, then they will rise. Stop wasting the power. Until your reason is accomplished, the power has not been given to any devil to kill you. He whom the Son has set free is. Whatever God gives you is sufficient. Come on. For your assignment in life. Honorable Fountaineers, how are you all doing this morning? I'm enjoying mine too. Our promise for this week is from Joshua 5 verse 9a. Let's take it together. Then the Lord said to Joshua, this day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Let's do it again. Then the Lord said to Joshua, this day I I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. I have rolled away every form of shame away from you. No more shame for you in the name of Jesus. No more diseases for you in the name of Jesus. No more inferiority complex for you in the name of Jesus. No more evil for you in the name of Jesus. You are now mine forever. You have entered this covenant because this was after they had been circumcised again because some of them had been born in the wilderness and they were, they were not circumcised before. So this was after they had been circumcised and God was reassuring them, this day, not any other day, this day, I want you to talk to yourself that this is the day that God is removing away approach from my life. This day. No, he's not saying tomorrow. He's not saying next week. This day. This day, this day, the reproach has been rolled away. I was looking at it, I'm try, trying to have a picture of how I can explain rolling away. And I had a picture of big drums, you know, water drums, filled, uh, filled with sand, if you like, or water. And you're standing on top of a high mountain. And you roll, the, you know how heavy it is. You roll this drum. 
Imagine it falling, rolling down the mountain. No one can pick it up and bring it back to you. It is rolled away forever. The blood of Jesus flowed the same way. It can never go back to his veins. It, it flowed for you. You have entered the covenant with the king of kings. Therefore, no reproach. You have to say it for it not to come to you. Because the devil will try you. He will try picking those drums up. <clears throat> Don't be afraid. Just know that he can never do anything about it. He was defeated more than 2,000 years ago. He will try to mock you. Just like it happened with this fairy tale of a tortoise. The tortoise wanted to feel, to have a feel of flying. And they asked his friends to, to help him fly. So the friends got a stick. And they said, you should just hold on to it with your teeth. And we will hold the stick from each side. Then they started flying. Oh, obviously the tortoise was happy, you know, having this power that he had never had before. The other animals who were down there started getting envious. They started hating on him. <laughs> you think you have wings. You think you can fly. <laughs> you can't even fly. You are a tortoise, a tortoise. You are a slow jam. Tortoises can't fly. He tried to ignore them. He knew they were provoking him. Just like the devil provokes you every day. You can't do this. You can't do that. Did Jesus really save you? Are you really born again? You. Look at you. Look at how you spoke to your husband. Are you really born again? Look at how you looked at that woman. Are you really born again? It's the lie of the devil. The blood of Jesus has flowed for you. You are born again. So the tortoise eventually wanted to say something. You know, when God says, hold your peace and I'll fight your battles. He knows what he's saying. He's trying to protect you from danger of falling. So what happened was the tortoise started getting angry. He opened his mouth trying to fight back his enemies who were down there and he was up there. The minute he opened his, uh, his mouth, obviously what happened was he fell down because he was supposed to hold on to that stick. You have to hold on to the grace of God. It is not because you have wings that you are flying. It is by grace that you are doing what you are doing. And his strength is perfected in your weakness. Do not look at your weakness. Look at his strength. Look at his grace. I'd like you to rise up and thank him. That this reproach, there is that reproach. There is that shame that has been trying to follow you all this while. Speak to it. Look at it today in the face. And told it and tell it, I know that you have been rolled away. You are just bluffing. You cannot come back. You, I know poverty, spirit of poverty. When Jesus died, he rolled away every spirit of poverty. You are just bluffing, making me feel like I have no money. I am rich. I, am, I prosper. And I'm in good health. Just as my soul prospers. I am not ill. You're making me feel like I have migraine. I destroy this migraine in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus flowed. I have been saved. I walk in a covenant. I am circumcised spiritually. I will no longer be uncircumcised. I'm not like any other nation because I understand that the blood of Jesus flowed for me. I am different. You're trying to make me look like every other person. No, I am not. That was yesterday. But this day, this day, the reproach has been rolled away. That was yesterday. When I was depressed, you thought I was depressed? That was yesterday. Today, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Today, I know, I'm, I, I know that it's at my right hand. And I will not be shaken. Today, I lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? I know my help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heaven and earth. I will not be afraid. He has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. I might have looked at my situation with a confused mind before. But this day, I'm looking at it with a sound mind. I'm looking at my enemies with love. I'm looking at my weaknesses with strength. Father, we thank you. Mm, mm, mm. We thank you. We thank you. No reproach. We thank you. We thank you. 
We thank you, no shame. People will not make us a laughing stock anymore. Makarakaba, because we are more than conquerors. We thank you for your power in us. We thank you for your grace. Because we know that you are standing by your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen. amen. My soul says yes. Says yes. Says yes. the number of blessings we have in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm enjoying mine too. And the light of God is here in Jesus' name. Thank God that you have the grace to be a Nigerian on a day like this. The position you have is to bless humanity and glorify God. And if anything, that should be our prayers for all our leaders. I want to share some scriptures that have been pondering over for a while. Then left it, came back, left it, came back, just suddenly came back to me again over these past few days. The book of James in chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 13. Is any one among you suffering? One version says afflicted. Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful or joyful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover multitudes of sins. Praise the Lord. 
for me to be able to do what I want to do today or explain the way I want to explain today, I just have to start by talking about the writer. Because that's actually where the real meat is. This here was James speaking. So first of all, let's differentiate this James from the James on the Mount of Transfiguration. James on the Mount of Transfiguration, James the Apostle, was the brother of John. You know, we have those Andrew, Simon, Peter, and Andrew, we have James and John. Then we have the big three. We have James, John, Peter, James, and John, right? Good. Not that James. That James was beheaded by Herod. Good. Now, it is believed and strongly proven that this James was James, the brother of Jesus. You see, Jesus was born by God through Mary, but James was born from the union of Joseph and Mary. Okay. And the thing about this James is um, when he got converted, it's not so much said, although we can walk through history to find out as much as we can. But one thing we know is that in the upper room, he was part of them. In the upper room where 500 were waiting for the promise of the Father, he was one of them. And again, what beats me was that when everybody, when at least 380 left, he didn't leave. In fact, he was very much part of the leadership. And in the upper room, we read, is somebody here with me? Please, yeah, pay attention, that they had to cast Lord to replace Judas. But they didn't cast Lord to replace James. That was beheaded. Rather, this James was a leader. I want you to know the character of the person we're, list, we're, we're going to talk, I mean, listen to this morning. References to, as a matter of fact, this, is, this was what um, Jacquefo said about him. He said, the book of James is rather practical and ethical, emphasizing duty rather than doctrine. In other words, he takes the doctrine and says, you can talk all you want about doctrine. The only way I will side up with you is to see the fruit. I want to see what you... Talk love all you want, talk faith all you want, talk peace all you want. I want to see it. And so he begins to look at the word and he begins to say, how can you be saying this and doing this? If you really want to... You can't be going this way and expect to find yourself that way. That's the kind of person that Peter, I'm sorry, James was. Very, very unassuming. And the whole of the book of James, that's it. You see, many years ago before I ever thought I'd be in the ministry, I'd been having the knowledge, you know. I just didn't believe it. It was the first time I got married and we were on uh, honeymoon. We didn't go to Dubai. We were in Miango in Jaws, in the Christian resort. I don't know if it's still there. Most of those places have been destroyed by, anyway. Um, mostly we saw Christians from all over the world, whites, Japanese. It was a good time there. The first night there, I was so exhausted, I just slept off. And the Lord Jesus appeared to me. Now, please hear me. I'm not trying to blow my trumpet so you can believe in me. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. Believe in Jesus. Is somebody hearing me? Please believe in Jesus. I've come to preach him. So he appeared to me. No, it's pretty easy because if I want you to believe for a miracle, I preach this way. That last year when I was preaching, somebody got healed of cancer, which of course would be true. I say that so that you can believe God for your cancer. Yeah? Understand what I'm trying to say? So we preach that way, so just to activate your faith. So we can get you to release your faith to get your own miracle. Sometimes it's not boasting, it's just to activate your faith. But that's not what I'm doing.
He appeared to me. And it was like in a setting. And I was standing with the Bible. And there were people sitting. It was a table, not a pulpit. Then I heard a voice. He said, first of all, the book of James. I stand as an oracle of God before God and before you. I took my Bible, I started reading the book of James, I underlined everywhere there. I guess what he was telling me is that Christianity has practicals. There are certain things that must be seen. Let me just quickly show you some of the things, the way this guy, the way he will think and talk. Or rather, again, let me, let me, let me establish him as one of the leaders quickly. Uh, first, in the book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 17, you see, I want to just refer to him so you can see him in action. But motioning to them with his hand to keep silent, he declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go tell these things to James and to, go ahead, and to the brethren, and he departed and went to another place. Now, here was Peter, the head of the church, in prison. And the church was praying in the house of the mother of John Mark. Remember? Yeah. And when Peter was released by the angel, <laughs> Mark Ashandara, but we're in a good time. Was really, your prayers are powerful. Your prayers are potent. Don't let the devil discourage you. Anyway, it was released, and he came knocking. The brethren that were praying could not believe it. And just shows you how we are. Pray, pray. And when deliverance came, we doubted it. And Salome went to the door. He said, Peter is at the door. They said, what are you talking about? It's Peter. But what were you praying for? Oh, Salome was right. Was that Peter that motioned to them when they opened the door with his hand? He said, Keep. He declared to them how the Lord brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go tell these things to James. When did this James become? In every house there are vessels. I believe that's the story of James. It's not, how much, it's not how, how much people are impressed. It's how much God is impressed. There are vessels. This James, when did he become born again? That even Peter said, please go to help you. Go to James. Hey. Acts 15. Go to 13. And, and after that, they be, aha. And after they had become silent. Come on, everybody read with me. Who answered saying, you know what they were arguing about? Whether the Christians must be circumcised, whether they must be made to be, follow the rituals of Judaism, those Gentiles who are now Christians, and there was a hot debate among the leaders. They see who stood up. And what did he say? Men and brethren, listen to me. I'm trying to establish this James as an authority for you to see in the church. Go ahead. Simon has declared how God at first visited the Gentiles to take out for his name. Yes, go ahead. And with these, and with these, the word of the prophet agreed, just as it is written. Yep. After this, I will return and I will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which was falling down. I will rebuild its ruins and I will send, so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who, call, who are called by my name, says the Lord who does all these things. Known to God from eternity are all his works. Therefore, I'm not asking for opinion anymore. I judge. James. Peter was there. I judge that we should not trouble those who from among the Gentiles who are turning to God. But that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses has... Had 
throughout many generations, those who preach him in every city. Okay, fine, let's leave it. But I'm just trying to establish. Can you see the role? Can you see the place of this James? I'll give you one more, or maybe two more. 2118. And you begin to see his character. A no nonsense person. If this is what I say, then let's do it. That was James. No diplomacy in the things of God. See that we are there or not. On the following day, Paul went in with us. To who? And all the elders were, all the others were present, and he was James. We must, this, we must seek this James. Wisdom. Galatians 1.19. That was Paul now reporting. But I saw none of other apostles except James, the lost brother. Now you know he's the lost brother. That was Paul saying so. He said, all oh, the revelation, when I came, I was wrong, so I don't run amiss. I needed to confirm these things. I did, when I came, I didn't go to, I went to James. Okay. One more, and I stop. Two nine. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be the pillars, who were the pillars? James. Who was Cephas? James, Peter, and John. Not James that was beheaded, James, the pillar. Now, that's established. So, he was the one that spoke on the passage that we just read. And quickly, let me just show you some things in the book of James, so that I can, I can carry on quickly with what I want to say today. It's a short message, I told you. Look at it from James chapter 1. It says, my brethren, verse 2, count it all joy. <laughs> When you fall into various trials, that was James, look at it, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. That's all. No time to play around. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Count it joy. My brethren, it's not joyful when you're in trials, but can I, can I advise you, based on the doctrines I've seen, based on what Jesus has, I mean, the foundation he has laid, and based on what I've seen around here and what I've come to understand, count it joy. That's it. You say, really? That's the way we, that, you go, you go to him for cancer, that's what he tell you. He has no time to cry with you. Count it joy. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I know you are going through, but I want to bring you to a place where nothing can disturb you again. Can't enjoy. James. <laughs> now, look at the next line. <laughs> If anybody lacks wisdom, if you think what I'm saying is rubbish, you don't understand, you don't, you don't understand this wisdom, go and ask God to give you wisdom. I'm talking about your matter and I'm advising you. Can't you joy? You are wondering, is that what he's going to say? Go and ask for wisdom. I have no time to waste. That's James. This is James. No nonsense. But we don't even know where he got born again. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. Who will give to him liberally without reproach? I to be, I to be given to him. He said, but let him ask him first. Because if you ask God, he will give you. You don't have it. Ask God, he will give you. Before you come back and say, don't give, uh, well, yeah, ask him faith. Okay, come, come, ask him faith. <laughs> because if he says he will give you, he will give you. I was told, it's the first, the book of James, Taiwo. God has sees the future. It's the first, the book of James. I'm grateful to God. <laughs> All through. His, his book is just instructive. Instructions, 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 instructions in the doctrine. They're instructive. Tell you what, what is expected of you. I can go on. For let no man suppose that he will receive anything. If you don't ask him, why are you wasting your time? So a lot of times what we call prayer is not prayer. Prayer that is not faith. We have faith. It's not prayer. You're wasting your time. 
God has no time to waste. He will answer you. That's James. I can go. Every line is instructive. Let me jump. Because the next line is instructive. Let the, let the, let, let, let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation. Yeah, you know you are there. He said, but glory in your exaltation. Glory in your exaltation. Ah. But I'm there. He said, glory in your exaltation. That's where he comes to us. Okay. He said, but rich in his humiliation. Because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. No. You know what he's saying? He said, don't put your anchor on your riches. Look at verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to us. Everybody will be tempted. He wasn't denied temptation. He said, but temptation is to be endured. Ask for grace. Let no one say when he's tempted, I am tempted by God. God doesn't tempt anybody. Please don't. James will not let you. No, don't, don't, don't blaspheme God. Mm, God didn't tempt you. No. That was, that was James. Don't tell me. The temptation was too much. God knew. God, God. Can you see what I'm saying about James? Let no one say that when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot tempt by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desire and enticed, and enticed. Then when his desire is conceived, he gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full, when it's full grown, is death. It can be avoided. Endure. Receive grace. Anyway, say, so do not be deceived, my, my beloved brethren. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Now, every line of the book of James. Can I advise you that you please do a Bible study? Do a self-study here. It will help you tremendously. In the name of Jesus. Now, just to let you know how it was established and his character and way of his manner of speech. That was, that was just what you see is what you get with James. Peter may try to, okay, no, James, ah. Ah. Now, it was this James that spoke to us in 513. I'm there now. And this is the message for us today, ladies and gentlemen. Is anyone here afflicted? Here, James. He said, pray. Really? Yeah. But you know, when, when, when James tells you to ask God, he said, ask in if you will get it. Is anyone afflicted? Is anyone suffering? Suffering of any kind? What is instruction? Can church help me? I can't hear you. 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 The truth is, there's nothing else left for you to do. You say, what about the word? What are you praying? You are praying the word. What's the base of a prayer? The base of prayer is what he has done, what he has said in his word. So pray. Hear Jesus. Hear, hear, hear Luke talk about Jesus in Luke 18.1. See, so men ought always to pray and not faint. So James is not saying a new thing. Are you experiencing something you don't like? Pray. I have prayed. Pray. I have prayed. Pray. Pray in faith. And if you understand this, it's not saying, it's not saying here that Pastor Tao will pray for you. Or Pastor Kule will pray for you. No, you say, are you, pray. Are you a child of God? <laughs> Paul said the same thing in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He said, pray without ceasing. So you begin to ask yourself, see, the way James will ask the question, are you a Christian? A Christian that is not praying? For a Christian, you must be praying. Pray. Prayer is not until you take 40 days fasting. Prayer is not until you don't sleep for one week. 
Prayer is your lifestyle. If you sense any pressure, pray. That's the way he talks. Put it on your board quickly for me. James 5, 13. Quick, 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 quick. Pray. 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 Men ought always to pray and not faint. Pray, 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 pray. I've been in very dire situations in my life. And I'm like, man, my shatter. Holy Ghost, God help me. Yeah. And when I'm true, I won't even know how. I will just suddenly remember, but I'm true. Then I'll look back. How did I? But where was the prayer? Help me. Pray is any. Pray. Is any cheerful? Sing sounds. I won't dwell on that. I'll come back some other time. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders. The first one, you be a praying person. The second one, if you realize that you are getting weak, call. In the motives of counsel, there is safety. And what will they do? They will what? Pray. Call on the elders of the church and let them do what? Pray. Anointing him with oil in the name of Taiwo. Oh, in the name, in the name of the Archbishop. In the name of the Pope. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And the prayer of faith will do what? What will save the sick? Oh, the elders. No, the oil. So when I'm anointing with oil, the anointing is the presence of his spirit, but he works with the word that you utter. It is the prayer of faith that still will heal the sick. James says, are you afflicted? Pray. Are you sick? That is, you need help. Call people. Call people. Come on. And let them do what? Pray. Everybody shall Pray. 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 Paul says, I pray in tongues and I pray with my understanding. And he says, I thank God I pray in tongues more than all of you. That was serious. Sometimes when I like that, he said, he prays longer than every individual. Mm -mm. People have proven that he said, all of you put together, I pray more than you all pray in tongues. So what's the life of a believer without prayer? I'm saying this today because I've come to tell somebody that your next step is begins now. Yeah. Honest, in the name of Jesus, your next step begins now. Yeah. The devil do everything for you not to take that step, but it begins now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. You say, what if I don't see it and I feel pressured? Pray. If you don't pray, you will faint. If you don't pray, you will give up. If you don't pray, you'll be discouraged. Jesus prayed all through. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. I'm still coming back to all this. Go further down. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up, raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. I'm watching my time. I would have called one or two or three to come out now and get your healing. And I won't pray for you. I'll get people to pray for you. He said that much to me. He said, I, I will demonstrate it right there. There's a departure from the truth. I feel the fire. I'm not joking. He said, but Pastor, when, when I pray, God does it. What do you mean? Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Are you calling me a liar? That's the way James will think. Say, pray. Jesus said, you will answer, you pray. What's wrong with you? The same Jesus said, if you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you that will join me be full. John 16. You think God is, you think he's telling a lie? 
Is that what Paul said? Is that what James said? When you pray, believe. Come on, pray in faith. Come on. Based on what he has said, you will get result. I'm going to ask you to pray before you leave. I'm not saying that we're going to pray for you. I'm going to ask you to pray. And I will expect you to come back and give testimonies in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Let me stop there. Why? Does it mean that when I come to church, oh yes, yesterday I cheated somebody. I'm sorry, I cheated somebody. I said, no, 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 no. See, because I am a praying person, you see, iniquity will hinder me if I regard iniquity in my heart. But yes, and because she offended me, or the way she looked at me yesterday, and, I'm, uh, uh, and we are coming to church, and I'm like, shakata. I said, see. See, I'm sorry. You were looking at me somehow yesterday. I didn't know. I got angry, you know. I said, eh, I wasn't looking at you. Okay, I'm sorry. Why? So I can hold her and say, ah, and God will bless you in Jesus' name. And she will look at you and say, eh, really? Wow. I say, God bless this man. Oh, what a humble man. What a truthful man. You know, that prayer may be the answer to all I've been looking for. Yes. You see, once I was in the plane, I got to use the loo. I get angry when people use the loo and they don't clean up the place before you go in. I want to use the loo, that is we, and I cleaned all the place, even the one they did there, put there. But in a bit to quickly wash my hand and people were waiting outside, I forgot to flush. So I just came out. Wow. Somebody went, I said. So I'm back in my seat. Then the guy was coming. He was just going. I said, excuse me. He said, yeah. I said, I just want to apologize. You see, I was so much in a hurry, I forgot. He said, wow. He said, wow. Ah, wow. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Because I left it bad for him. I didn't deliberately leave it bad. He walked past. He got to his seat. He stood there. He still turned back to him. He said, wow. So I got angry with her yesterday. I said, I got angry yesterday, but don't be offended. But I love you, eh? God will, prom- God will increase you. God will promote you. Yes. You'll be surprised that that prayer will be answered quicker than the queue you are waiting for for the pastors. Yes. You are wondering why we are not seeing miracles? Because we are not taking our places. Anybody have said, pray! That's the promise that he will answer you. He said, call unto me and I will, what? I will answer you and I will show you. <laughs> Strange miracles. In the name of Jesus, the days of shaking and fear are over. In the name of Jesus, the days of waiting hours on end when we have everything for us in the kingdom. I said, Those days are over. In the name of Jesus, who are you waiting for? You know what we have developed in the body of Christ today? We develop the syndrome of the, the great man of God. No. He's the great God of the, of the great man. Is there a complaint? Anyone that got into their complaint in the book of Acts, you will know you are in the presence of God. Yeah. Given that the presence of a man too, carrying the presence of God can be really something else because you, you feel the presence of God. But you come into a church like this, when people know they are right and who they are. And the reason you say you should confess a fault, that's why I can pray that it may be healed. Why must you come with sickness and go out with sickness? I said, please agree with me. Why? This lady has been for anybody in the name of Jesus will rebuke it. And that's it. The time has come for that to begin to happen in the body of Christ. It's not until you go to crusade. Crusades are good. Confess the prayer, say one to another, and do what? Pray. It's all pray, pray, pray. Right? That may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man does what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man does what? Do you know that what the transition says? Well, that's just trying to tell you that it's the miracle working power. The miracle working power of the prayer of a righteous man. A righteous man's prayer will rock miracles. It will. It will. 
But what interests me is, as I said, said, of the righteous man. So the problem is this, while you think your prayers are not important, or the prayers cannot be answered, and while you are not exercising faith, it's because you don't know that you are the righteousness of God. What James is saying, if indeed you are a Christian, if indeed you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, your prayer will move things. Hello? You know how Jesus says it? He said, I am the vine, you are the branch. <laughs> you know, Ken Hagen was talking about these things. He said, he was on his on the sick bed, paralyzed. At age 16, he was told he would never walk again. For 16 months, he was bedridden. He said, somehow, he didn't know much about the Holy Ghost, but somehow, he was just believing, praying to God. Yes, you know. Just until he started reading the Bible and he got to this place and he said, let them call on the elders. After he'd been told by doctors that he was not going to leave. Let them call on the elders. And he thought, ah, okay, I've been praying. And it's the, it's the elders. But the elder that came said, uh, we thank God for this family which is about to be believed. He heard. He said he didn't see a man lying down there. He kept quiet. He said, but I read that the prayer, that let them anoint you to the prayer of faith we heal the sick. As he read for that, I said, the effect of prayer of a righteous man. He said, oh, maybe why God has not said my prayer because I'm not a righteous man. He said so. He said, but I've called them. He said, but the Holy Ghost began to teach him he began to read in the Bible the definition of a righteous man. By the time he began to understand, he said he knew that he would not die. He knew that he would rise. Then he started, look, it was much of what he did for himself, speaking the word of faith, that's prayer. He got out. He lived until 80-something. And he said he never one day experienced headache until 85 or 86 when he got. Now, the choice is yours. The choice is mine. Jesus is the same. The Holy Ghost is the same. The Word is the same. I say that with all sense of responsibility that you don't need to die where you are. You can go Father, in the name of Jesus, it's up to you. Pray! <laughs> Can I be frank with you? There are times that I'm there and I see and I'm in every direction. I'm like, and my wife wouldn't be able to help me. I would try to explain things to her, but she's a woman of great discernment. She would start to pray. But I would know that at that time it's up to, it's up to God and me. So I was wishing that some people would just have a revelation and pray for me. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, he hears the prayer of the right. I'm here to encourage somebody. If everybody's Christianity is just lukewarm and just rituals, not yours. Amen. Particularly in the periods that we are in. And I think I really got my attention there as I close. I have to close. The effect of everybody, I've missed much. Yeah, 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 go, go ahead. He liked was a man like, like, like me. And he did what? Prayed. See, this man is just talking prayers. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Yes. And then he prayed again, and it rained. He was a man like me. No, it was great Elijah. Uh-uh, uh-uh. He didn't say Elijah was a great prophet. Elijah was a man like you. Go read that story. Oh, after destroying 430 prophets of Baal, when the woman came, that see what I'm going to do. He replied, "I fled." 
He was a man like us. He went and climbed the tree and said, God, kill me. Elijah. You know what somebody said? He said, if you really wanted to die, we would have waited for you for just better. <laughs> he was a man like us. But what made, what, made, what made that man different? He prayed, he prayed, he prayed, he prayed over a nation. One man, and things change. I can pray over a nation. I can pray. I can't. I can't. And I will in the name of Jesus. Like passions. He was righteous. And God hears the prayers of the righteous. He does. I didn't pick it. In first chapter 3, he said, His ears are open to the prayers of the righteous. Open. He looks to our flow to answer. Remember, he says, But when you pray, pray in faith, believe. You know what Kenegi says? Mark 11 23. If you say, but this mountain be there, removed and be there, cancel the sea. I don't have a doubt in your heart, but you believe I want to say it's come to pass. You will get it. Who spoke there? Jesus. You will get it. Amen. If you say it, you don't doubt, you will get it. You know what he said? He said, That is personal prayer. Which is exactly, are you have to say, Pray! You will get it. It's personal. That's personal. 24, Mark 11, 20, 23, personal. Mark 11, 24 is group prayer, double prayer. When you are agreeing. And so if you stand praying, believe. But personal, if you say it, not until you do. No. Say it! What are you saying when you are walking on the street? What are you saying when you are lying on your bed? What are you saying when, 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 when you are buffeted and pressed all around? What are you saying? Pray! Say what God has said. Say it! That's prayer. You will get it. I see miracles. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And besides, he says you don't even know how to pray as you ought to. When he's asking you to pray, the Holy Ghost is here to do with you what you cannot do by yourself. Anytime you are praying, you are praying in partnership with him. With groanings that cannot be uttered. Can I be frank with you, ladies and gentlemen? I'm just starting. In the name of Jesus. Malabo shakata la bora bashata, reto boro shakanta raba baba, rekata bora bo shakata baba baba. Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of the? I shall fear no evil. God is with me. His rod and his staff they comfort me. Prepare the table in the prayer. Pray. You know what somebody said? Said there's something worse than death. What is that? What dies inside the living is worse than death. You say, what's that? You are living, but you are dead inside. Inside, what for you? God has not given you the spirit of fear. Power, love, and the sound mind. Open your mouth and declare. Declare. Declare in the morning. Declare in the after. Declare in the night. Say what he has said. Pray. Pray. Afflicted. Pray. See? Pray. Call on people. Pray. They have effectual power. Ah, it will turn this around. You can stop things. Let's rise.